In this video, what I'm going to be doing is creating a clock in Adobe Animate. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a second hand, minute hand, and hour hand. And it will be accurate to the current time. And uh, yeah, it'll go in a circle and you'll see how this works. So let's start by creating a new ActionScript 3.0 file. And the first thing I'm going to do is design my clock face. So let's go to insert new symbol and let's call it clock face and we're going to make sure that it's a movie clip not a button okay for me it was such a button so make sure it's movie clip click OK and I'm going to start just by drawing a circle here um, I'll go with this green color it's fine it doesn't really matter now we want it to be a perfect circle so hold shift when you do that if you hold shift you'll get a perfect circle make it nice and big you can always move it if you need to um, I'm just going to try and center this a bit better. The more we center it, the better this is going to work out. And what you can do is, if you're trying to center this and you're having a hard time, what you can do, you can turn on the grid. So go to View, Show Grid. And then, zoom in a bit. Oh. Maybe, maybe it'll work better if we, uh, if I was using a little bit more transparency in this thing, it might, might have worked a bit better. You know what, I'm going to take the color out for now. I think I can fill it later, later on. Yeah, I can fill it later on if I want. There we go. Okay, so you could just make it transparent like this. And like I said, if you're getting really technical, what you, what you could do is you could count how many different lines you had here. You know, with, with the grid, how many different uh, points across you have on both sides. I can tell right now it's a little bit um, to the right, so I'm just, I'm just going to shift it. It doesn't really matter that much, um, but the more accurate you center this, the better everything is going to be. So I'm just going to try and shift it over just a bit. Okay, that's pretty much centered. I'm just going to have to... Yeah, I'm just trying to make these as close as possible. Like, that's fine. If it's off a little bit, it's not the end of the world. Just do your best to try and center this. You want that point right in the middle as much as you possibly can, and it will just... Uh, it's just going to work out a little bit better when we put our hands in and, our, and the faces on here. Okay? So now, we're going to put all the numbers on. So we want the numbers like 12, 1, 2, 3, like that. Okay? So to do that, we're going to make a second layer. I'm going to call this one face and another layer called numbers. And actually, I really don't want to mess that face up. So I'm just going to lock it just to, just to be safe. So the way we're going to do it, we're going to take a line and start at the very center here. Draw it stick straight up, but maybe that long. We can do even more, maybe even like that. Okay. And wherever the line is, that's where we're going to put the number 12. So use the text tool, and actually I'm wondering if we should even use a separate layer for this. I don't want it touching the line, so let's go here. 12, and if it's too small, make the font a little bit bigger. Oops, better highlight that first. Mm, could go even more, even more on mine. You be the judge, however you want your number to look. You decide. Okay. And then position it. You know, if you have to use the arrow keys like I am right now, try and position it as precisely as you want. Okay. Now, we're going to take this line. And what we're going to do is we're going to rotate it now. Now, we don't want to use this because if you think about a clock, okay, we're going to go to get to the, the number one or the one hour, it's actually 30 degrees. So this would be 30 degrees, another 30, another 30. That gets you 90, right? So each hour, it has to turn 30 degrees, basically. So make sure your line is selected. And to, and to rotate it precisely, we're going to go to Modify, Transform, and then Scale and Rotate. Scale and Rotate allows me to actually punch in the number of degrees, degrees to turn it. So let's turn it 30 degrees. Okay. And now I'm going to reposition it back on the dot. You may have to use arrow keys to get it back on there. But now it's basically pointing at 1 o'clock. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the text tool again. 
and draw myself one. And we're going to put it right on the end here. Okay. And again, just sort of be a judge. Try and get it as close to make it even like that, how far away from the edge you are on both of them. We're just going to keep going with the same process. Take this, modify it again, rotate it again, another 30 degrees, and then reposition this thing. Just like that. That's where 2 o'clock is. So just keep doing this. It's going to take me a minute to complete my clock. Okay. And we're just going to con continue going. Just keep going. Every time you rotate it, just reposition it back on the uh, center point and then draw your new number in. Now again, what I'm doing is I'm just using plain black text for my numbers. Obviously, you want to make it more interesting than that. You know, the, I, w I would pick something more interesting. I'm just doing a very, very quick job here just to show you how this works. Rotate again. Number four. Again, this takes a little while. Modify. It's going to rotate another 30 degrees. This is 5 o'clock. And just keep going here. So you get the picture. If you want, like I said, you could pause it here and just skip ahead, whatever. Speed this process up. So I'm just going to keep going. Transform, scale, and rotate every time you're doing 30 degrees. Reposition the line. And then put your new number in. Again, we're just, we're just trying to make this as precise as possible. If you try and do it by hand, I mean, you can do it by hand, but sometimes you get, you know, if it's a little inaccurate, it looks a little bit off. People notice those things. And this is the reason why that center point is really important. You've got to try and center the face so that you're actually rotating around the true center of the circle. That's eight. Almost done. That's where I'm just going to rotate. Let's get to 9 o'clock. Again, I'm just using my keyboard just to position these things. Two more, 10 and 11. So there's 10. Right on there. And the last one. So here's where 11 o'clock should exist. All right. It's pretty good. So once you've done that, I'm just going to delete the line. I don't need it anymore. So now all of my numbers are on here. Okay, They're on a separate layer, which is really good. And actually, I left them all as text. So I could change these. I could change the font if I wanted, or the color, or anything like that, which is kind of nice. I, I like having that flexibility. So I'm going to leave it. I'm just, but for now, I'm just going to lock both these. So I don't, I don't want to mess these up. OK, once you've done that, we're going to go back to scene one. And we're going to leave the clock face as it is. Let's insert a new symbol, and let's call this thing our hand. Actually, no, we'll do second hand first. Do, do the second hand first. And it will be a movie clip, so leave it like that, movie clip. Click OK. Now, the second hand, if you picture like a clock, the second hand usually is the longest, and it's the skinniest usually. So I'm going to do my second hand as like a red line. I'm going to make it longer and skinnier than the other ones. And for stroke, 
One is pretty thin. Let's go with maybe three. And go right to the center point here. Stick straight up, just like that. Okay? Now, we're going to have to put some code on this thing. So this is the, the layer one is what contains my, uh, my image, like the, the actual hand itself, but I want code on it. So to put code on it, I'm going to create a new layer. This new layer, I'm going to call it code. And on the first frame right here, I'm going to right click and go to actions. Now the code we're going to put in here is this. So here's what I want you to type. Type in a comment first and say this is the second hand code. And we're going to put var my date colon date equals new date bracket bracket semicolon. So what that's doing is it's creating a variable called my date that is of type date. So it's a date object. And when you say equals new date, what that's doing is it's actually creating a copy of the date object. So I have this thing now called my date that is a date object that I can work with. And the idea here is we're going to use the current seconds to figure out how far to rotate the, the hand. Right now it points stick straight up. Here's the code we're going to use. This dot rotation equals six times my date dot seconds. Again, don't, don't get too hung up on the math of how this works, but you should realize a few things. The function called this, when I say the word this, what it's referring to is the current object. Now this code is within the second hand. So when you say this, it's referring to the second hand. Rotation is just a property that I can change. So I can change its rotation using code. So if I have a rotation of 90, that should be, you know, turn 90 degrees basically, right? So what it does is it takes 6 and it multiplies by the number of seconds. So at 10 seconds, it multiplies 6 times 10, which is 60. So 60 degrees, right? So 0 is stick straight up. And then when you get to the end, you got 60 seconds, right? 60 times 6 gives you 360. So the most it could be is 360, essentially. So that's basically what it does. Let's see if it actually, well, it's not going to work yet. I have to add one more piece of code. I need one more frame right here, okay? On frame two, I'm going to insert a blank keyframe. And I'm going to right cl click and put code on this thing as well, put actions on it. Now there's a new function I'm going to show you here. It's called go to and play bracket one. Okay, what this does is it tells Adobe Animate, when I get to this particular frame, this is frame number two, it's this blank frame right here, I want it to go to and play one. So it goes back to frame one. So it'll go to two and then back to frame one. Go to two and back to frame one. It's almost like a looping mechanism, okay? So each time it'll go here and it'll rotate it again. It'll go here and rotate it again. That's, that's the point of this, okay? Now, the only thing to be careful with is frame one, I can see the, the hand, but frame two, I can't. If I leave it like this, it's going to just glitch out. It's going to be like blinking on and on, on and off, on and off constantly. We don't want it to look like that. So right below it, right here on this empty frame, right click and insert, don't insert a keyframe, insert just a frame. Okay, if you insert a frame, then that picture just sort of stays here. You know, it's not, you don't need a keyframe for this one. Okay, so let's try this out and see if it actually works. I'm just going to drag the second hand on the screen right in the middle here. And it should tick away as the seconds go. Yep, and it's rotating around its bottom point. So it absolutely is working exactly as I expect. All right, let's take that off the screen. I don't need it right now. We're going to insert a new symbol. Let's call it minute hand. And the code of the minute hand is very, very similar. We're going to do the exact same process here. Let's draw a line. And this time maybe I'll use black. Eh, three is okay, that's fine. But I won't make it quite as big this time. Start at the center point. Maybe that big. Nah, actually, you know what? I'll do a little bigger. A little bigger. Why not? I want the short hand to be, or the hour hand to be kind of short. You can always resize this later on anyhow. Okay, so we're going to add another code layer. So go add, add a new layer. Let's call this thing code. And in the first frame, we're going to put code on it. So the first thing we're going to do is write a comment. 
say this is minute and code. And we're going to create another my date variable. So var my date colon date equals new date. Again, all that line does is it creates a variable called my date that is a date object. <clears throat> and now we're going to set the rotation to this. This dot rotation equals six times my date dot minutes. So it's six times the number of minutes. So if it's 10 minutes into the hour, six times 10 gives you 60 degrees and that's, that will work. Okay. Let's try this as well. Oops. Again, I forgot the same thing. I need to go to and play as well. I need this thing to keep cycling back and forth. If it, if you don't have that, then it, it, the rotation will never change. So oops, right click, insert blank keyframe. And then make sure you're on the actions of it. Yeah. <clears throat> Go to and play one again. So I have two little two A's here. It means I got action script on both those. And down here, right click, insert frame, not not a, a keyframe. So let's go here, back to scene one. I'm gonna drag out a minute hand. And I'll drag out a second hand. And I'm just gonna kind of Put them on top of each other. Eh, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just testing right now, anyways. Let's see if it works. So if it's 18, it should be pointing to like the bottom right corner. Let's see if it's doing that. Yeah, so the black one's my minute hands. It's 218 on my computer right now. It goes by the system clock. So that's that's where it's pointing. That's it's exactly where it's supposed to be. Okay, again, delete that off for now. <clears throat> Let's do the hour hand now. New symbol, hour hand. In the hour hand, I'm going to make it a little bit fatter and a little bit shorter. Like that much there. Okay. And we're going to add a code layer to this thing. The hour hand code is a little bit more complicated than the other two, but it's still not that bad. And again, don't worry about the math behind it. As long as you get this thing working, I'm happy. This is our hand code. And we're going to say var my date colon date equals new date. Again, that makes my date object. And now I can use it. So this dot rotation equals 30 times my date dot. Uh, hours plus hmm? okay so we're gonna go 30 times my date dot hours plus my date dot minutes divided by two again this this is like some math here don't worry about the math as long as you can type this in correctly and get it working should be good to go okay so there's the rotation equation now we're going to insert blank keyframe again. And on this one, we want it to go to and play one. Same exact process. We want it to go back to frame number one and re-rotate itself. And then down here, we're going to insert just a frame. Just like that. That's exactly what we want. Two frames of code. This is like a single frame here with a square on the end. That's exactly what you want. And let's try it. So uh, maybe, you know what, I shouldn't have deleted those old ones off, but that's okay. Second hand, minute hand, let's, I'm just going to line them up here for a sec here. And then the hour hand. I'm just using the keyboard just to put these on top of each other. They all rotate around the bottom, so make them all go in the same spot. Let's see. It looks like it's working. So this is 2 o'clock, 2.20, and it's got a second hand. All right, let's put everything together. Let's put it all on the clock now. So I'm going to get rid of this off my screen. And let's go to the clock face. We're going to add some more layers. Let's add a layer for our hand. And let's go ahead and throw the hour hand on here. Put it right in the middle, right on that little marker there. Okay. Let's do another one for minute hand. The nice thing about these hands is that they self-animate, right? 
they're self-drawing themselves on the screen, which is pretty cool. Okay, so I can see a bit of a problem. This minute hand is going to be too big. I can resize it. It's not an issue. Okay, it's sticking off the end. I, I can either remake the symbol or just uh, stretch it here. Doesn't really matter. Just got to make sure though. If you stretch it, you gotta you gotta still get the bottom over there. Okay. And let's go with another layer for second hand. Put every single one of them on their own layer. Makes it a little bit easier to separate them. So second hand definitely is too big. I'm just gonna resize it before I do anything. Okay, so just resize this how you need here. Let's see. Might I might have made that too small. That's okay though. Again, just use your keyboard, line these up nicely. And that should be okay. These are all self-drawing. So let's go back to scene one and drag a clock onto the screen. Okay, now the clock itself is actually too big. So we got two options here. We can shrink the clock or we can make the stage a little bit bigger. Let me show you that. So all you gotta do is right click, go to document. And this is the uh, the stage right now. We can change the size. So 550 is too small. Let's go 800 pixels by, I don't know, 700 pixels. There you go. So let's hope and pray it works. There we go. So it is 226 on my computer, and it is 226 on uh, on the screen here. So actually, there's way too much down here, right? I did see an option. What was match contents? Let's try that. Ooh, nice. Okay, so it makes the window just big enough. Perfect. Yeah. So here we go. I mean, this is my working clock. It works perfectly. The only thing that sometimes happens is if these aren't perfectly lined up, see how that's like a little bump that sticks out almost? There is a way of hiding that. It's pretty easy. All you do is go into your clock and you can add another layer and just call it dot. And just draw yourself like a little, like a, like a tiny black circle like this or something. Make sure it's on the dot layer though. So I have it on the dot layer. It's on the very top. And all I'm going to do put that on the top and center it and it just sort of covers up any anything that might sort of look a bit funny. Let's try it again see if that looks any better. There you go. So it's, it hides a little imperfection. That's what the dot is for. Now you can do even more interesting things like what I've seen people do is put like a little interesting little design in the end of the second hand and have it self animating. I'll show you how to do that very very quickly here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new symbol and I'm going to call it um, second hand tip. Make sure it's a movie clip. And what I'm going to do is draw myself, how about an octagon? Let's use this thing here. Go to options. We're going to do an eight sided shape and we're going to fill it red and we'll draw an octagon. Something like that. And then just center it as best you can. Doesn't have to be perfect, but something like that. Now, what I wanted this thing to do is I want it to rotate. So I'm going to right click, insert a keyframe, and I'm going to get it to rotate. Just pull it a little bit. Okay, and then right click, insert a keyframe, rotate it a bit more. I'm hoping I'm not stretching it. It looks like it might be stretching it, actually. Actually, it's not even that bad right now. So it looks like it's pretty much a full rotation already. You can play with this. Like I said, design it how you want. I'm just hitting Enter to sort of preview what it looks like. It's up to you. Just so make it look somewhat interesting. And then what I can do is I can go maybe to my second hand. And I can put that on the top here. That's way too big. So I'm going to just hold shift and shrink it a bit. How's that look? Perfect. All right. 
Let's just see what it does. Ooh, it looks a little... Oh, you know why? Because I stretched that thing earlier. That's going to look a little strange, but let's see what it looks like. It's spinning around. It's kind of weird. It went octagon because I, I had shrunk this thing originally. <clears throat> if I want to fix it up a bit better, what I'd have to do is uh, make this line smaller on here. Come on, I want that thing to move down. There we go. So I actually shrink the size of the uh, the sprite itself. And I'll go back into the clock. Remove the second and just drag a new one out. Something doesn't need to be resized. Just moving it up. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, so just a little bit of an interesting thing. You can do that with the numbers if you want. You can have interesting numbers with animations. Like you can self-animate them, no problem. So it's kind of cool, you know? So anyways, this is the uh, the clock. And again, there's not really that much code. Each of these hands has basically three lines of code on each of them. And uh, it's not too bad. Anyways, here's your clock uh, in Adobe Animate.